talk all the time, you'll never hear what anybody else has to say. And therefore, all you'll have to talk about is your own conversation. The same is true for people who think all the time. That means, when I use the word think, talking to yourself, sub-vocal conversation, the constant uh, chit-chat of symbols and images and talk and words inside your skull. Now, if you do that all the time, you'll find that you've nothing to think about except thinking. And just as you have to stop talking to hear what others have to say, you have to stop thinking to find out what life is about. And the moment you stop thinking, you become into immediate contact with the unspeakable world. The force of liberation will blow the world to pieces. Hey Dig, how you going? We hope you've had an awesome week. It's so good to be back together. Em, sure how you going? Yeah, I'm doing pretty well. Doing pretty That's well. Good. How are you going? I'm, yeah, I'm going really well actually. Yeah, going nice. well. Um, what have you been up to this week? Look, I've been doing a bit of organising, a bit of cleaning, all that stuff that you put off for years and oh, yeah. just forget about it, just like all the cupboards and stuff like that. So that's kind of the fun stuff that I've been doing. Nice. Um, yeah, we've got plenty you? of time to do that. I've just been doing uni work. Same old, fun, same old. Fun. It's This is like third week in I'm still just trying to smash out assignments but that's okay that's that's just life um, yeah so you guys second week back at school yeah I think so you guys are now possibly starting to go back to school next week on their week yeah. so maybe it's exciting might start seeing people in person get to see your friends I know I'm so that's... excited whenever I see anyone I know it's just yeah it's just you I think you really cherish that time with people mm. um, but we have something coming up this Sunday that's yes. pretty exciting 
Mother's Day. Mother's Day. That time when we celebrate our moms. They're so, pretty great. What would you say? They're pretty great. Yeah, they Mothers are. are pretty great. <laughs> they are. Um, so, uh, we just want to encourage you guys and remind you guys that it is Mother's mm. Day this Sunday. Um, so, maybe think of something you could uh, do for your mum or celebrate with your mum. Uh, we might... What are some things that we could maybe do? Well, you know, like every year we could go out to our favourite restaurant and have... Oh, Jack, oh. I don't think we can... I don't think we can do that this year. No, we can't. Hmm. What about you get a gift voucher and book them in for a massage at a... Oh, actually... No, you can't do that either. Okay. Um, uh, ooh. Oh, you go to the movies. Movies. Oh, uh, oh, Jack, they've been closed for a while now. They have. Um, right. One hour later. Okay, so we've had some time to think uh, that we might need to change our ideas a bit. To I think so. Kind of suit the way things yeah. are going at the moment. So instead of going to a restaurant, we could have takeaway. Oh, so like bring the restaurant to your mum. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe set it up so it's all fancy. Maybe bring out the fancy cutlery and stuff. Yep. I don't know if or even home cooked meal true, for your mum. True. Yeah. So maybe you want to try a hand at that. Some of us can cook well. Others maybe not so much. But that's okay. Yeah. There's always the that's takeaway right. option. Um, and option. maybe instead of going to the movies, we can rent your mum's favourite movie. Yep. And, you know, set it up nice. Watch as a family, have some snacks. Yeah, popcorn maybe. Oh, you know? yeah. Because you always got to have popcorn when you go to the movies. That's true. I mean, that's just a thing. And instead of, like, booking your mum in for a massage, and maybe you could give her a foot massage. Pamper your mum on a special day. Yeah. Um, some good options. So those are some different ideas, and there's always the try and true of writing your mum a really nice uh, handwritten letter. Maybe that nice, goes a long way. Nice card, I think. They're a the very long way. They just like to know uh, how much you love them. Mm. Um, and oh, so that's this week. That's Mother's Day. Uh, but uh, this week that just we've just had the week yep. that's just been, uh, <laughs> we've been doing this reading plan. So we've done each day. And it goes through a little like passage or a couple of passages, um, a little devotion, uh, which we've been doing. And it's been really great to mm. be able to do that every day and see other people's comments. Um, if you want to be involved in that, uh, we're not going to put it up on this. We're going to put it in the Zoom um, chat yeah. after. So if you want to be involved, let us know and we'll send you the link. Because um, we would love to do it as, uh, as youth together. Um, and see your comments and be able to have that discussion on, on what God's sharing with each of us. Yeah, and it's another great opportunity to connect as youth where we can yeah, write our thoughts and um, what, what we're feeling God has spoken to us through that devotion yeah. and those passages that we've read together. So, and we've been doing it for a few days now. Um, we started on Monday, but it's not too late to, to join and yeah, you can just catch up with the days as well. They're, they're, yeah. they're not too long, so... Yeah, so it's been yeah. really good and we'd love for you to join us on that. Uh, now, tonight we have our Zoom hangout afterwards and a bit of discussion and all that. Um, so just a reminder that if you want to um, be in that, uh, we're going to put up the link uh, in the chat. Uh, but you have to put your full name um, for us to recognize you and actually yep. admit you into it. So if you don't put your full name... You can't get we can't let you in. So we can't let you in. Yeah. Um, so uh, don't put your full name <laughs> in the chat. Put it as your name when you're entering the Zoom one. Yeah. Um, bit of safety there. Uh, and, and then... Now, before we head to a bit of worship, um, we just got to remind you as well that you can write your comments in the chat section. Oh, yes. There's live prayer. There's the heart button. Um, and, yeah, just a great way to connect with us as well through that. Yep. Um, but yeah, before we hear from Isaac, we're going to um, go into a bit of time of worship. Yep. So again, we encourage you, sing along, dance along, whatever you want to do. Um, this is just a great time to connect with God um, through music. So yeah. <laughs> presence I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up 
up in this holy moment Never want to leave oh, I'm not here for blessings Jesus, you don't owe me anything More than anything that you can do I just want you I'm sorry When I've just gone through the motions I'm sorry When I just sang another song Take me back to where we started I open up my heart to you I'm sorry when I've come with my agenda I'm sorry When I've forgotten you're enough Take me back to where we started I open up my heart to you Caught up in your presence I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment Never want to leave Oh, I'm not here for blessings And Jesus, you don't owe me anything More than anything that you can do I just want you I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, Jesus, nothing else will do. Just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. Can do. 
Evening, Dig. Good to see you all again. Hey, uh, how was that little clip from Matt? That was real good. Uh, Rosie, Ollie, you guys have got a talented dad. Uh, well, it is good to be hanging out. We're going to have a quick chat here again. I'm going to try and keep this week pretty fast, pretty tight. We're going to jump into small groups. As Jack and MC, we've got a few things planned for our small group uh, Zoom meeting this week. Another reminder that you need to be putting your name down and we will accept you into that. Um, hey, if you were with us last week, it was first week of this term, and we jumped into a series working through Philippians. Um, if you missed it, or if you just want to quickly be brought up to speed, Philippians is a book where Paul is writing to the church in Philippi, and he's in a prison cell. He's been uh, imprisoned for his efforts of sharing the gospel, sharing the good news of Jesus. And instead of sitting around having a little pity party for himself, he decides that he's going to use it as an opportunity to write a letter of encouragement uh, to the church in Philippi. Um, Last week, we did talk about trying to have a perspective like Paul's, where we consciously choose to be an encouragement to those around us, regardless of the season that we see ourselves in um, at at that time. Um, And tonight, Paul takes that encouragement sort of one step further, where he actually celebrates the season that God has got him in. So I'm going to read this for you. We're still in chapter 1, if you want to read along. uh, Chapter 1, verse 12, and it's titled, They Can't Imprison the Message. I want to report to you, friends, that my imprisonment here has had the opposite of its intended effect. Instead of being squelched, the message has actually prospered. Uh, That word squelch just means instead of it being sort of squashed out and unheard, it has actually prospered. All the soldiers here and everyone else too found out that I'm in jail because of this Messiah. That piqued their curiosity and now they've learned all about him. Not only that, but most of the followers of Jesus here have become far more sure of themselves in the faith than ever before. Speaking out fearlessly about God, about Jesus the Messiah. Uh, Jumping down to verse 20. I'm going to keep that celebration going because I know how it's going to turn out. Through your faithful prayers and the generous response of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, everything he wants to do and through me will be done. I can hardly wait to continue on my course. I don't expect to be embarrassed in the least. On the contrary, everything happening to me in this jail only serves to make Christ more accurately known. Regardless of whether I live or die, they didn't shut me up, they gave me a pulpit. Alive, in, I'm Christ's messenger. Dead, I'm his bounty. Life versus even more life. I cannot lose. So Paul is pretty chirpy here, and uh, he is writing this message to the church in Philippi saying, hey, regardless of where I am, it's great. Like all this good stuff's happening around me, and he is choosing to see that. So two things that I just quickly want us to look at. First, a challenge for us is this. Try to find joy in every situation. Um, Before we get into talking about this anymore, I just want to say this. I am not suggesting that God puts you in bad situations. Um, I don't think God punishes you and puts you in these situations, nor do I think God put Paul in this situation. But for one reason or another, God allowed Paul to be in this situation okay that doesn't mean he made it happen but he chose to allow it Um, however in the middle of all of that paul chooses not only to have a perspective of like the glass half full he actually is like uh, the glass overflowing is really his perspective where he says that at the start of this passage i want to report to you friends that my imprisonment here has had the opposite effect of its intended effect Everyone is hearing the good news of Jesus. Paul was in a crap situation. Okay, We could all, I think, sort of stand and look at that. He's in jail for something that he really shouldn't have been there for. He's uh, a long way away from the people that he cares about. Um, he no doubt is wanting to be free from prison because he had a mes- message to share. And being in a prison cell at first would have caused him to feel like uh, he wasn't able to do that. But he didn't let that situation rob him of his joy. Instead, he actually chooses to find joy in that 
situation. Now, I want to ask us the same thing. Are you trying to find joy in your situation? There might be something going on in your life that if you are honest, it's just a crap situation. Um, there might be a situation that you feel unfairly punished or judged. You feel like the odds are against you, or you may just feel like you're in a season that you can't see the end of. Well, please don't hear me tonight uh, saying that your situation isn't significant. I'm not trying to belittle what is going on for you. Um, and God cares about what is going on. So I by no means want to, want to dismiss that. But I want to encourage you to ask God to give you joy, to ask God you, to allow you to see the forest from the trees. And even amidst the pain you may be in, that he would give you the capacity to still find joy in the situation you are in. Maybe even come to a place of like Paul did, being able to give God glory for the situation that you are in. Again, I'm not implying that uh, whatever is going on for you, that God orchestrated all of that together for you to be there. I don't think God causes you to be in a crap situation, but for one reason or another, he is allowing us to experience those things. He's allowing us to experience those seasons. And whilst I don't believe he caused them, I absolutely believe that he can bring something good from it, that he can bring a joy even in those situations for us. Second thing, second thought I just want us to quickly look at, and then we'll chat about this in small groups, is another little phrase that Paul says this, is uh, how can your situation make Christ more known? How can it make Christ more known? Paul says this, On the contrary, everything happening to me in this jail only serves to make Christ more accurately known. Regardless of whether I live or die, they didn't shut me up, they gave me a pulpit. So as we read in that passage, Paul takes this opportunity to share Jesus with the prison guards and to all the other prisoners. And he says that all of those people have heard the good news of Jesus, that their hearts and ears have been open to that. And then also says the Christians he has come into contact with have actually had their faith solidified and they're walking a little bit taller, uh, encouraged by the way Paul uh, is living. So Paul didn't let his situation stop him from doing what he believed he needed to do, which was simply sharing the good news of Jesus. And I have no doubt that is why Paul was able to find joy in the situation he was in. Now, you may be like me, and you may look at your own life and be a little disheartened and disappointed at how effectively you are at sharing the good news of Jesus. And I know for me, if I'm honest, I think, man, there's way more people in my life that I need to share that message with. There's way too many opportunities that I let pass by that really I should be trying to step in and see the name and the good news of Jesus shared. Well, I want to challenge us to not only step forward in sharing the good news of Jesus, but like Paul, even in a bad situation, our first thought being, hang on a minute, how is it that I can share the good news? How is it I can bring glory to God in this situation? And I don't want this passage to be one that causes you to feel guilty, to walk away kicking your heels thinking that you've failed God in some sense, but rather be encouraged that a man like Paul in every situation just looked for an opportunity to share Jesus and God used him. God turned his prison cell into a pulpit chance for him to share the good news and for you maybe it's God using your school as a platform for you to share the good news of Jesus maybe it's your workplace maybe it's the influence you have over your peers or your family but I encourage you to be praying for opportunities and boldness to make Christ more known the truth is in every season, good or bad, that is what you and I have been called to do. So my prayer for us tonight is that even in those bad situations, we would A, try and be able to, or try and find some joy in it. Say, God, by your spirit, bring me joy. Cause me to see the things in this season that can bring joy. And how is it 
that I am sharing the good news of Jesus so that God may be glorified. Well, as I said, we're going to jump into some small groups. We're going to chat about that a little bit longer. Uh, there's going to be a button down the left there for you to click, and we will let you into that group, and we are looking forward to hanging out. Thanks heaps. Talk soon.